Did you know that during the Second World War, the Red Army fielded an entirely female sniper team? But before we get into today's facts, welcome to Random Facts with Neil, the channel that explores the world of random, fun, interesting, silly facts. Now, if you love to learn like we do, we're hoping you'll hit the subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos. That way, you can meet us back here and we'll learn some new fun, random stuff together. All right, are you ready? Are you ready? Let's go. Fact number one. When going into battle or combat, which I guess are the same thing, military leaders will tell you that while you want to be as thoroughly prepared as possible, you really only want to take the necessary equipment to make you as efficient and as effective as possible. In essence, the bare necessities. Well, during the Second World War, the Polish army took this quite literally. Did you know the Polish army had an enlisted bear during the Second World War? In 1942, at an Iranian train station, some Polish soldiers who were leaving the Soviet Union came across a Syrian brown bear cub that was for sale. So naturally, what do you do when you're on active duty? You buy a bear. Of course you do. So they bought the bear, they named him Wojtek, and they took the bear with them. So Wojtek quickly became the unofficial mascot of the 22nd Artillery Supply Company and would be with the company for several years during which the uh, soldiers would wrestle with him, they'd give him cigarettes and beer and food, I'm presuming. Now, during his time with the 22nd, Wojtek would even travel, uh, going to places like Egypt and Palestine and Syria. So, pretty well, this bear's more well-traveled than I am. Now, later, the Polish would join the British 8th Army in a campaign in Italy. However, British transport regulations forbid any live animals, pets, or mascots, so... How do you keep your bear buddy from being left behind? Well, you enlist him, naturally. So, Wojtek was enlisted as a soldier. Um, in fact, he was enlisted as a private. So, on paper, he just looked like any other soldier. He was even later promoted to corporal, but that's another story. Wojtek would remain with the Polish military through the end of the war, and even a couple of years past that, until the year 1947, when he was transported to the Edinburgh Zoo in Scotland. There, he would live out the rest of his days till the year 1963, where he died at the ripe old age of 21. So, bear necessities. Gotta have a bear. Fact number two. The last time you were in an argument with someone where you 100% knew that you were wrong, how long did you hold out before you admitted it? A couple days? Maybe a week? What about 30 years? Well, did you know... The last Japanese soldier to surrender did so in 1974, nearly 30 years after the end of the war. Now, just as the war was ending, Hiru Onodur retreated into the jungles of the Philippines where he hid and awaited further orders. Little did he know that it would be nearly 30 years before he received those orders. But that didn't deter him. He continued to survive and kept hope alive. And that rhymed. Onodur would not officially surrender until his former commanding officer went to the Philippines, into the jungles and found him, and officially relieved him of his duty at the order of Emperor Shawa. 30 years in the jungle. This guy missed the, uh, the moon landing, Woodstock, and Gilligan's Island. Tragic. Fact number three. Family. What can you say about family? Um, at some point or another, we're all embarrassed by our families. Um, we might even fight with our families from time to time. But uh, if you've ever seen the movie The Godfather, you know that you should never go against the family. You know, that was awful. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But that's easier said than done in some circumstances, because while your dad may have driven you to school in his robe once or twice, did he ever try to take over Europe? Because that would be embarrassing. Did you know... Adolf Hitler's nephew fled Germany and fought for the Allies during the war. And to be more specific, he was a member of the U.S. Navy. That's right. William Patrick Hitler, who would later change his name to William Patrick Stuart Houston, which, smart move, actually would spend most of the 1930s in Germany working various jobs that his uncle arranged for him. In fact, 
William even attempted to blackmail his uncle at one point, threatening to go to the press and tell them that Hitler's grandfather was a Jew in order to get a high-ranking position. Anyway, in 1938, Hitler would offer his nephew a high-ranking position on one condition, that he relinquish his British citizenship. Now, because of everything that happened before this, William suspected this was probably a trap, so he decided to flee Nazi Germany and immigrate to the U.S., where he attained citizenship and was granted special permission by the government to join the U.S. Navy. So, I mean, who doesn't enjoy a good family feud, though? Right? That's dumb. Before we go any further today, I'd like to recognize today's sponsor of our video, Rally for Vets. Now, Rally for Vets is a charitable organization by vets for vets. It was founded by two veterans in Northern Virginia in 2020 and is a 501c3 charitable organization. Now, since their founding, Rally for Vets has raised thousands of dollars through their charitable events and legal road rally races in order to help veterans and their families pay for medical expenses and mortgage payments. So if you'd like to learn more about Rally for Vets or any of their upcoming events, please check out the link in the description below. All right, back to the facts. Fact number four. Have you ever just been in the wrong place at the wrong time? Well, the subject of our next fact is the gold medalist of wrong place, wrong time. This is Sutomu Yamaguchi, and he has quite a unique and unbelievable distinction. Did you know this man survived both atomic bomb blast at the end of the war? On August 6th of 1945, Yamaguchi was in Hiroshima on business for his company Mitsubishi when the American B-29 bomber, the Enola Gay, dropped the atomic bomb known as Little Boy just three kilometers away. Now, though he was injured, Yamaguchi managed to get to the train station the next day and ride home to Nagasaki. Now, again, despite being injured, Yamaguchi returned to work only two days later on August 9th. Now, once at work, Yamaguchi was actually in a conversation with his supervisor describing the blast he had survived just three days earlier when the second atomic bomb, known as Fat Man, was dropped again only three kilometers away. Again, Yamaguchi was injured but survived. Now, while it's believed that there are other individuals that did survive both blasts, Yamaguchi is the only one that is officially recognized by the Japanese government as a dual survivor. Now, as unlucky as he seemed on these two particular days, Yamaguchi actually would go on to live a long and fairly normal life, living until the year 2010, where he died at the age of 93. Whew, 93. Fact number five. When you were a kid, did your grandpa ever sit you down and tell you old stories about him fighting in the war? Yeah, mine, mine either. But you know what would have been weirder? is if he sat you down and told you he was getting ready to enlist for the war. Did you know the oldest soldier to fight in World War II was 88 years old? That's right. Nikolai Morozov was 88 years old when he enlisted with the Red Army in 1942. Now, as you can imagine, military officers were not thrilled to have a nearly 90-year-old man attempting to enlist. Uh, however, Morozov made such a stink threatening to even file an official complaint with Stalin himself that military officers finally just said, you know what, F it. And they let him in and they made him a sniper. Not a great plan. Morozov would actually go on to see combat and would later be awarded a medal for the defense of Leningrad in 1944. So, nice job, Grandpa. All right, let's recap today's facts. Fact number one, the Polish army had a bear enlisted in their service during the war. Fact number two, the last Japanese soldier to surrender did so in 1974. Fact number three, Adolf Hitler's nephew fought against his uncle with the Allies during the war. Fact number four, Tsutomu Yamaguchi survived both atomic bomb blasts. And fact number five, the oldest soldier to fight during the war was 88 years old. All right, that's it for today. Hope you got something out of today's video. In addition to subscribing, be sure to leave us a comment. Let us know what topics you'd like us to cover going forward. And also let us know what we got wrong. 
You can also check out our social media platforms for more fun random facts. This has been Random Facts with Neil, and now we know what we didn't know.